remember the last test? You had the question about the endothermic and exothermic reactions. Yeah, exothermic right. was the big kaboom. <coughs> yes. Endothermic was the yeah. Right. So, but endothermic, if it takes energy to put something together, it's going to release energy when it comes apart. An exothermic is where they're going together. In an exothermic process, you're putting things together and it gives off energy. And then when you want to break it apart, you're going to need energy to break it apart afterwards. Same amount of energy. Okay. Your body uses chemical energy. So it converts the food you eat into radiation which is reabsorbed and converted into mechanical energy. So you can move and beat your heart. <laughs> Use your brain. Especially in time class. Yeah. And some of the food you eat gets converted into electrical energy. Electrical energy? Yeah. So we can touch something you can tell it? Yeah. Some of the food you eat gets converted into electrical energy, and that is More what your brain waves is what your brain waves are. Oh. Electrical. Yes. Electrical. I'm electrical. <laughs> you really are, actually. Yes. Yeah, it just sounds funny. <laughs> and so, a really strong electric field. Oh, good. Could kill you. My uncle can help me because with this it'll mess up the brain. Yes. Ow. What? <laughs> Yes, and prolonged expo exposure to a fairly large, not one that would kill you instantly, <laughs> but just a large electric field can, what? can be damaging. <coughs> yeah, you can get nerve damage from exposure to I large electric fields. In other words, it's not a good idea to live underneath those giant power lines. You mean know, the ones that are 500 feet high? Yeah, those really big ones. Yeah. Okay, the ones that they just put in like on your way to the city? Yes, yes. Huge yeah, you wouldn't want to live under these. Yeah. Okay, I won't. Besides the fact that it's really noisy. Yeah. Because they, they have a constant... This is, yeah, by the uh, pole. By the pole. Yeah. Electric lines go by there, you go by You can hear it going. Yeah. Yep. It's yep. annoying. Yeah, that's the one back there. Yeah. I always wondered what that was. Yep. Yep, that's electrical. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about, electrical energy. What is electrical energy? <laughs> so electrical energy is charged particles moving. Uh-oh. <laughs> Photovoltaic? What's that? Photovoltaic. Where do you see that? Um, the first sentence under electrical energy. Scientists have developed special photo something or other cells. Oh, photovoltaic yeah. cells, right. So, like so what, 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 what are those? Those are solar panels. Ah, well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I could put in English. <laughs> solar panels. So they convert radiant energy into well, electric energy. If I would have read the And actually, that's not so horribly hard. Yeah. Why? No, because because like electric energy. energy, like the like the thermal energy, it's kind of a dual thing. It's it's mechanical in the sense that you have a charged particle, and we know those to be electrons, right? So negative particles flowing through a wire. You think they eventually lose their electrons? Huh? Not if you have a closed loop. Oh no. <laughs> So you provide you provide a potential. See, this is why a battery Loops. runs out of energy. So you have a battery, yeah. And so you have a whole bunch of electrons. They come out and they come back in here. Well, they can't ever get back up to this part of it. They go to a separate storage. Well, that's not. <laughs> so what it is is on this end. There's something that likes to give away electrons. And on this end is something that, uh, a, a, a compound or an element that likes to receive electrons. It's going to take a lot. And so what it does is, but they make it so that they're separated chemically, or they're separated physically. So here, what, what's actually inside your battery, okay, we got our positive and our negative. So, okay. 
Here's a, a piece of insulator. Things can't pass through it. Electrons yeah. can't. And up here we have a whole bunch of lithium, so like a lithium battery. The best ones you can get? Lithium. And they like to give away electrons. And down here we can put, well, I don't know, something. something. We, we, we could put, we could put uh, fluorine. Obviously, fluorine's a gas. It would take up too much space. So we wouldn't actually put fluorine, but we'll, we'll say it's fluorine. What, bromine? Huh? Bromine. So we want something with the same charge. Yeah. So it would be most efficient. But it's a gas, so that's not, not really what they use. Zinc. Like. It could be zinc. It could be something else. Zinc is usually used with copper. Zinc and copper. Okay, so the electrons all flow out this way. And they come in here, but they can't get over here anymore. And so <clears throat> the fluorine wanted a whole bunch of electrons. And once all the fluorine atoms <coughs> have all the electrons they want, and the lithium have given away all the electrons they want, there's no more flowing going on. <laughs> and so you have a dead battery. That's all we have. So, that's what a closed loop is. And there's other ways of forcing electrons through a loop. That you can use mechanical energy to start them flowing using a magnet. And this is why electric energy is two part. You've got electrons moving, so that's mechanical, right? It's an, uh, something, a massive object moving. Yeah. That's mechanical energy. But, when it's a charged particle, if it's moving, it has to move you've got an electric field going. Oh, I see now. There's a little electrical thing yeah. there. So you've got a whole bunch of charge the moving through a wash. Yeah. So you've got an electric yeah. field pointing out radially in every direction. But you also have a magnetic field that points in a circle around the wire. That's weird. That's weird. Well, <laughs> a little weird. Little weird. That's why you can make an electric magnet. Electromagnet with a 9-volt battery, a wire around a, around a, a nail. You can, you can pick up paper clips and stuff like that. Cool. Haven't you ever made an electromagnet? No. 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 Oh. We should try something. So you, yeah, you, well, we will. We'll probably make one. Cool. <laughs> so you have an un, unmagnetized nail, and you wrap a bunch of wire around it, collect the two ends to a little nine volt battery, and go around and pick up metal objects with it. It's, it's, usually ma it's magnet. It becomes a magnet. Now, what if you take the wire off? What if the battery is? Then the nail is not a magnet. The nail is a, the nail is not a magnet. What's that? That's the one in the battery. <laughs> well, then you don't have a then you don't have a magnet. You have to have you have to have electrons flowing through that wire. Yeah. yeah. But guess what? Light. What's light? What is light really? So here, just move it along, right? Light can be described as both a particle and a wave. It's particle. It's a particle wave. It is. It's, it has wave particle duality. What? What, what do you say? Wave, it's a wave and particle. a particle. It's not a particle until it hits something. <laughs> Light isn't a particle until it hits something. Then it acts like a particle. Until it hits something, it's a wave. And so, I'm trying to draw, I'm going to try to draw these perpendicular. So, obviously it's a two-dimensional board, so it's going to be a little hard to draw things that are perpendicular. So this small wave that I'm drawing really has the same amplitude as the big wave, only it's in and out of the board. You kind of see that? Okay. So it has an electric field wave that goes up and down, and it has a magnetic field wave that goes in and out. Well, electricity has an electric field and a magnetic field too. So electricity, though it's electrons moving along, also has that radiant energy aspect because it, it's the same. E and M 
electromagnetics. Light is a is a electric field, an oscillating electric and magnetic field. Electricity is a constant electric field, electric and magnetic field. If you have a constant flow. But they're the same thing in a certain sense because of that. So like thermal energy, though this is a much more complicated topic, I take two whole classes just, I spend a whole year just talking about this and understanding this. That's one reason why. <laughs> so, so if you have a little hard time with it, yes, I understand. But thermal energy is both radiant and mechanical. Similar electrical energy has both a ra uh, radiant and a mechanical aspect to it. Though the aspect for electric energy is a little harder to understand. Magnetic energy. Oh, well, we can kind of understand that. What is magnetic energy? It's it's a field of positive and negative. No. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> like that. Oh, it's short too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like electric and electric field energy. See, you can also just have an electric field if you have non-moving charges. So if you could take a bunch of electrons, like for example, a good example, is if you have a balloon, which we have a balloon, I'll show you the electric field. I think we have balloons in this guy. I can't show you the electric field itself, but I can show you, well, if Molly undoes her hair, I can show you the electric field. Oh, no. <laughs> if we have balloons. I thought I saw some in here. I think we do. Where? Where? I thought I saw them. Do you know where they were? No. Yes, no? If I know what you're doing, I think I've done this at home like 90,000. What's that? I said, I think I've done this at home like 90,000. Yeah, well, maybe you'll have to if I can't find the balloon. <laughs> <laughs>